Blessed is our God always, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Blessed are the undefiled on their way. Alleluia. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your rules of life. Alleluia. My soul is worn with endless longing for your judgments at all times. Alleluia. My soul has grown weary because of being despondent. Strengthen me with your holy words. Alleluia. Lead on my faithful heart to your testimonies and ever not to greediness. Alleluia. I am a true companion of all who love and fear you and keep and honor your commandments. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia. Mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray to you, hear us and have mercy. Again we pray for the repose of the soul of the servant of God, Mary Ann, who has fallen asleep, and for the forgiveness of all her errors, both voluntary and involuntary. That the Lord God will place her soul where the righteous rests and will grant to her the mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the forgiveness of her sins. Let us ask of Christ, our immortal King and God. Let us pray to the Lord. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your servant Mary, and who has fallen asleep, O Christ, our God. And to you we ascribe glory. 
together with your beginningless Father and your all holy and good and life-giving Spirit, now and forever and unto ages of ages. Your own hands created me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Be merciful to me, O Lord. For I have become as a bottle in the frost, yet your statutes I have not forgotten. Have mercy on me, O Lord. I am your save me. For your rules of life have I always sought. Be merciful to me, O Lord. From all your instructions, Lord, have I never strayed. For you have given me the law. Be merciful to me, O Lord. For you to act the time is upon us, for they have transgressed your law. Be merciful to me, O Lord. Oxa patrike o kea ye o pnevmati. Elin kea i keis tu se onas to ne ononami. Eleis on me kiri e kiri a. Kiri u dei thomen. Ότι σύ ανάσταση ζωή και ανάπαυση τη κυκμένη δουλειά του Μεριάν, Χριστέ ο Θεό Σιμών, και εσύ τη δόξα να αναπέμπομεν, συνάρχου σου πατρί και Παναγία και γαθό και ζωπιό σου πνεύματι, λύν και αή και ει αιώνα των αιώνων. Ελέισον με αλληλούια, look graciously upon me and have mercy on me as you do for those who love your name, alleluia. I am young and accounted as nothing, your commandments I have not forgotten, alleluia. My pleading voice hear, O oh my Lord, in your great mercy, in your justice, grant me life. Alleluia. Rulers unjustly persecuted me, but my heart has always stood in awe of your words. Alleluia. My soul shall live and praise you, and your law shall be my support. Like a lost sheep, I have gone astray. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your rules of life. The company of saints has found the source of life in the entrance to paradise. May I find to the way through repentance, for I am the lost and stray sheep. Bring me back to you, O Savior, and save me. Su kiriu dei thomen. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your servant, Mary and Mary Anastasia, who has fallen asleep for Christ our God. And to thee we ascribe glory, together with the beginning's Father, and your holy good and life-giving spirit, now and forever, and in the ages of ages. Ευλογητό η κυρία, διδαξών με τα δικαιώματά σου. You of old did fashion me out of nothingness, and with your image divine did honor me. But because of transgressions of your commandments, did return me again to the earth where I was taken, lead me back to be refashioned into the ancient beauty of your likeness. Let us pray to the Lord. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your servant, Mary Ann, who has fallen asleep, O Christ our God. And to you we ascribe glory, together with your beginningless Father and your all-holy and good and life-giving Spirit, now and ever and to the ages of ages. 
Ευλογητός η Κύριε δίδαξον με τα δικαιώματά Σου. I can and my of your ineffable glory, even though the marks of sin are on me. Take pity, Lord, on your own creation, and cleanse me in your compassion. And my cherished homeland do you grant to me, making me again a citizen of paradise. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your rules of life. Give rest, O God, to your departed servant now and place her in paradise, where, O Lord, the choirs of the saints and the righteous shine as the stars of heaven. Give your departed servant eternal rest, overlooking all her sins and trespasses. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us devoutly praise the one God and His radiant Trinity. Singing holy are you, everlasting Father, co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit. Illumine us as we worship you in faith and in reverence from life eternal. Now and forever and to the ages of ages, amen. Hail, Holy One, who for God in the flesh so that all of us could be saved. Through you the human race has found salvation. Through you may we find paradise. O pure and blessed Theodokos. Alleluia, 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 doxa si o Theos. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, doxa si o teo. with grief, what glory endures immovable on earth. All things are feebler than shadows, all more elusive than dreams. In a single moment all are supplanted by death, but in the light, O oh Christ, of your countenance and the sweetness of your comeliness, Rest the one you have taken like a true friend of man. Like a blossom that wastes away, like a dream that passes and is gone, so is every mortal into dust resolved. But again, when the trumpet sounds its calling, as though at a quickening of the earth, all the dead shall arise and go forth to meet you, O Christ our God. On that day, O Lord, for her whom you withdrawn from among us, appoint a place in the tent things of your saints. For you, O Lord, the spirit of your servant, O Christ. All human things are vanity, which do not survive a person's death. Riches do not go with us, nor does glory accompany us on the way. For when death comes upon us, all of these shall vanish indeed. Therefore, let us cry to Christ, 
the immortal King, give rest to her who is departed from us in the dwelling place of the blessed. Indeed, how awesome of our death is the mystery, how the soul is forcibly severed from its harmonious union with the body, and of their coexistence this natural bond by divine will is broken. Therefore, we implore you, give rest to the departed one in the dwelling of the righteous, O giver of life and lover of mankind. Fashion me a living creature, you shaped my body from the earth, and gave me a spirit by your divine and quickening breath. Wherefore, say in your good breath to your servant, in the land of the living, where the righteous dwell. Give rest, to Savior and giver of life, to our sister, whom you have taken from things temporal as she cries glory to you i weep and with tears lament with understanding i think on death and see how in the grave there sleeps the beauty which once was fashioned in the image of god but now is shapeless and ogle bear of all graces Oh, how strange a thing is this mystery which concerns us humans. Why were we given up to decay? Why to death united with wedlock? Truly it is written that things come past by the ordinance of God. And to her now gone, O Lord, give rest. The Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Your death for mankind, O Lord, became the cause for our salvation. For had you had not in the tomb been laid, for us paradise would open not. Therefore rest the departed in your eternal love for man. Both now and ever and to the ages of ages, amen. O pure virgin, the word's holy gate, and our God's mother entreat, we ask that mercy be given to her soul. Remember us, Lord, in your kingdom. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Makaria i odos i pore visi meron oti ti mas ti si opusan apseos. for you a 
place of rest. Let us be attentive. I will call upon you, O Lord, my God. Wisdom. The reading is from the first epistle of Paul to the Thessalonians. Let us be attentive. Brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant about those who have fallen asleep, so that you will not grieve like those who have no hope. Because if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, so we must believe that God will bring with Jesus all those who have died believing in him. For this is the Lord's teaching. We tell you, we the living, who survive into the coming of the Lord will in no way meet him ahead of those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a shout of command, the archangel's voice and the trumpet of God. And those who have died believing in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain on the earth will be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and remain with him forever. Peace be with you. Wisdom arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with you all. And with your spirit. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Let us be attentive. Glory to you, o Lord. Glory to you. The Lord said to the Jews who came to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself and has authority, has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. I can do nothing on my own authority. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray to you, hear us, and have mercy. Again, we pray for the repose of the soul of the servant of God, Marianne, who has fallen asleep, and for the forgiveness of all her errors, both voluntary and involuntary. That the Lord God will place her soul where the righteous rest, and will grant to her the mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the remission of her sins, let us ask of Christ, our mortal King and God. Grant this, o Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. O God of spirits and of all flesh, who has trampled down death and crushed the power of the devil, 
and grant a life to your world. Do yourself, O Lord, give rest to the soul of your servant Marianne, Maria Anastasia, who has fallen asleep in a place of light, a place of green pasture, a place of repose, where there is no grief, sorrow, or mourning. Forgive every sin which she has committed in word or deed or thought, for you are a good God who loves mankind. For there is no one who lives and does not sin. Only you are without sin, your righteousness, everlasting righteousness, and your word is true. Και εσύ την όξα να αναπέμπομεν, συν του ανάρχο σου πατρί και το Παναγίο και αγαθό και ζώπιο σου πνεύματι, νυν και αή και εις τους αιώνας των αιώνων. Let us pray to the Lord, for you are the resurrection, the life, the repose of your servant Mary Ann, O Christ our God. To you we send up glory, eternal Father, holy good life creating spirit, now and to the ages of ages. Let us pray to the Lord, for you are the resurrection, the life and the repose of your servant Marianne who has fallen asleep, O Christ our God. And to you we ascribe glory together with your beginningless Father and your all holy and good and life-giving Spirit now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to you, our God. Glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Father, give the blessing. May Christ, our true God, who rose from the dead and has dominion over the living and the dead as immortal King through the intercessions of his most pure and holy Mother, of the holy glorious and all praise apostles, of our holy and God-bearing fathers, of the holy and glorious forefathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of his holy and righteous friend Lazarus, who was four days in the tomb, and of all the saints assigned to the dwelling place of the righteous, the soul of his servant Mary Ann, was departed from among us, grant her rest in the bosom of Abraham, number her among the righteous, and may he also have mercy on us and save us, for he is a good God who loves mankind. May your memory be eternal, however blessed and ever memorable, sister. May your memory be eternal, however blessed and ever memorable, sister. May your memory be eternal. Wherever blessed and ever memorable sister. Frank and her children, Alexandra and Ford, her beloved grandchildren, Charlotte and Louis, to Arthur and Meredith, Mrs. Sarah, Linda, and Thadia and your family, relatives and friends. There's no words that myself or Father Peter, Father Mark, or Father Jordan can offer today that 
to bring comfort and to take the sorrow away. There's a compound word in Greek that really for us Orthodox that the church uses. It's called charbolipi, chara and ipi. Lipi is the sorrow that we feel and express, that touches the depths of our heart when someone from among us is physically going to be gone. And yet the joy today, because throughout this service today that we chant, and throughout our beliefs of who we are, as St. Paul said today so clearly in the epistle, as Presidenta Marika read, let us not be like those who have no hope. For since Christ came and he died again, and through his resurrection he opens up the gates of paradise. He restores Marianne today back to her original beauty. Some of you in the back perhaps you can't see, but the icon of the resurrection. It's her middle name day. We see Christ there coming out of the tombs, and he's holding Adam and Eve, but he's not holding by their hands. He's grasped them under their wrists so we don't slip. This is the faith that we're called to have on, to examine our own hearts and souls, that belief that we know is true, and today that we offer towards our Lord's our prayer that the Lord receive her soul in his kingdom. Restore her again to a place where there's no pain, no sorrow, no suffering. You know, there's three parts to Marianne's life. Life before Frank, life with Frank, and life now with our Lord. As she grew up, and I remember hearing from her mom and dad that and many of you that grew up together here in the church as adults watching her, as her friends growing up with her. You knew that Marianne was someone who always wanted to excel. Not to be the best, but wanted to give her best for anything she did, from a small project to major things. I knew that when I first met her, she was involved with her children. Perhaps I knew she drove them hard sometimes to make sure that they always will do their best. There was no excuse, especially when she pointed that finger at you. You knew that you not were in trouble, but you had to be accountable of who you are. And she didn't do this by her words. She did this by her example. You know, St. Francis of Assisi said, you know, we should always preach the Lord. And when necessary, we should use words. So Mary Ann... She kept her word and her commitment by her deeds, not by her words. I knew that she was involved with Hockaday and, and St. Mark's School, UT Southwestern Foundation, and just recently with the Christ, Cristo Rey School of Dallas. And I can't tell you the, probably the tens of other things that they were involved to support and to make sure they were fine, to make sure that whatever, not only monetarily she give, but it was mainly that commitment, that personal touch, that humanity that we have that we can express. She wasn't afraid to show her human side because she was strong who she was. We're all vulnerable. We can all get hurt. Sometimes we can get misused and even take it for granted, even abused. But Marianne was willing to take that risk not just once, but all the time. I had asked her one time for help. I loved working with our young people here, and back then I was a young priest, no longer. I still like working with young people, but I said, you know, Marianne, we have a great program for our teenagers and the young adults, but we're missing something for the young kids, the elementary school kids. Would you help me? Let's get a few other moms. Because at that time, uh, Arthur and Meredith were uh, in elementary school. She said, okay. I said, well, let's, we'll get together in three, four days, and we'll figure something out. Well, about a day later, the phone rings. She goes, okay, I got it. Uh, is this day okay? Can you check the calendar? I said, yeah, it looks great. She goes, good. I've hired a clown. I've got this coming. I got the... I said, 
well, we just want a simple thing. She goes, oh, no, it's got to be good because we've got to be able to make sure everybody comes. Not only our kids came from our church, but as soon as word got out, we had calls from all the other Orthodox churches in the area they wanted to bring their kids. This sounds like a small thing, but that's how she looked at the challenge. And then we were challenged as a community that we had to move here. Here we're, we were going to start to build their new church. And this is where life starts with Frank. Very few of you know that I knew when they first um, started to go out. I knew it because I could tell there was a difference in Marianne's life. She struggled, and as a priest, sometimes you know the joys of people's lives, and we know our struggles. And it was a dark time of her life before, not because she didn't love her kids or didn't feel that she was taken care of, but it was just a struggle. And here comes Frank. And one day after I said something to her, I said, is something going on? And she turned so red. She goes, how do you know? How can you see? Well, first I was at the house, because I always had the keys to Frank's house. And she was there, and she said, the first thing she said to me, we're doing church work. I said, of course you are. But she was washing a dish at the sink. Not that Mary never washed dishes, but <laughs> I said, and again, it's three people who really, you know, we're, we're called to love one another, and that's so true. But there are people in your life you like to be with. And that's somebody who I always love to be with and like to be with. But the next day after uh, we had left, I guess she wanted to follow up. She, she says, can I come by? Let me pick you up. Well, let's go have lunch. And she wanted to make sure, and I never told Frank this, never kept anything from him, but she says, what do you think? I said, all I know is, Marianne, if you care for this man, and if he tells you that he cares, that's the secret. If he tells you, it'll come from his heart. You have nothing to worry about. As a matter of fact, I would be so happy because I can't think of two other people. It's just like oil and vinegar, but you know what? You need them both to make a great salad dressing, I said. And that was it. After that, how God blessed them and pursued them, we started working. Some of you don't know, not only were we in a parish council, she became the first woman president of our community. And hours of dedication and work. We used to finish downtown at, at Swiss Street, at 9, 30, 10 o'clock, we go to the Melrose Hotel and stay there till 2, 3 in the morning sometimes, go over and plans and just planning for the church. And I knew next day she, wanted, she needed to be at the office because either she had clients or whatever was going on. But those were times of great joy. You sacrificed because you did it willfully, and that's the great example that she gave to others around her. She inspired people to do that. There were so many things that all of us, every one of you here, that knows her has something personal, some joy in your life, something that you shared with her. Perhaps she touched your life. And that's why today we pray for her. And we ask God to continue to remember her eternally. That's what it means when we say, Eonia su imnimi. May her memory be eternal. Not just for us to remember her, but for the Lord to remember her. And then I told you after this life with the Lord. Today, I'm sure there's only, not only the angels rejoice, but one other great person that is glad to embrace her, and that's Dr. Saris, receiving back his little baby. But in due time, someday again, as we're told by our Lord, we will be together to meet the Lord. And that's why those who pass, the church refers to them as the church triumphant. That's why if you look closely at these icons, you'll see not only people, icons of men and women, but even children. Those people who love the Lord that they were willing to serve in whatever capacity they had. And we're called the church militant, left behind to fight the good fight. So today, we have sorrow and we have joy. You know, it was a few years ago, they started this trend, celebration of life when people passed. And the first time I saw it, I said to myself, that's kind of funny. We've been doing this for 2,000 years when someone passed. We've always celebrated because we celebrate death. Those of you who are not familiar with the expression of our faith as Orthodox Christians, 
These saints and all, we don't celebrate the name of their birthday. Their celebrations, the feast, is on the day that they've passed away because that's when they're reunited again with the Lord. That's why we remember their lives and their deeds that we can emulate them and ask for their prayers. So it is a celebration, but not just of life. It's a celebration of her new journey. We started as a child going into the water, baptized, dying with Christ and sharing his resurrection. And today we take the other passage that she takes. The kids the other night, they've been receiving so many cards and notes. And I want to end with this because this is something they, 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 they just printed out that was given to all of to them. And these are adjectives that were left by cards and notes. Not all of them, just a few in the last uh, two days ago. A mother, a wife, grandmother, Yaya, daughter and sister. Joan of Arc, a soulmate, a leader. Amazing, adverse to those in need, admired by many. Powerful, smart, work ethic, a shooting star, businesswomen, Philotimo, best friends to all she loved, a beautiful soul, wonderful. My honey, kind and gracious, will live in each and every person she touched. A special person, beautiful wife, generous, magnificent, wonderful. Sense of humor. There's one I'm going to skip in here. Tough, I would say, instead of the other word. Lawyer, a rock. Welcoming, wisdom. All of Dallas had cried for you, full of life. A long trial of beautiful memories. Fond of Marianne and great respect. Luxury and might, fierce. Two of us built an incredible legacy that will endure. Marianne did, think, Marianne did things with focus, determination, and grace. Lived her life fully every day. Life force, positive and strong. One of a kind and stylish. These are a few of the adjectives. But most of all, you'll remember her as your mom. The kids will remember her and you'll teach them as they continue to grow and the kids to come to the future of who she was. That's your legacy. Something to be so proud of. You have someone who loves you, has loved you from day one, and continues to love and be there. But now that you're adults too, you have to be supportive of each other. And we as the family, as your extended family, as your church and friends, that's our responsibility to continue to remember us, her in our prayers and to show our love and respect to the rest. May indeed God remember him in his kingdom. Amen.
the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. I'm Liza Lee, and I think I'm here because Mary Ann was my boss. I was the head of Pocket A, and Mary Ann was my board chair. She actually was on the board the entire time I was at Pocket A. And from the very beginning, I felt I'd found a sister. Um, I, never, I didn't feel she was my boss until we lived together for a while, and then I realized that she was governing everything I did <laughs> and everything I wore. So I'm here today just to tell you how I feel now. Because Mary Ann and her family have been in my thoughts every minute since I got the sad news. And at first my thoughts were in random order, but as the hours passed, I tried to order those thoughts by letting each one take me to a poem. When I am sad, now I'm an English teacher, so when I am sad, my first comfort is poetry. So the teacher in me remembers Mary Ann as a beautiful poem, and I want to celebrate her in poetry, so you'll have to bear with me. It's very brief, though. I was in love with Mary Ann, as was everyone else who ever knew her. And the first poem I thought of, because to know Mary Ann is to love her, is an E.E. E. Cummings love poem. I carry your heart with me. I carry it in my heart. I am never without it. You are whatever a moon has always meant and whatever a sun will always sing is you. As I say, I told her once that I felt she was the sister I always wanted. I wanted to be with her forever, for the rest of my own days of sunshine and moonshine, because I never imagined that she would leave us so early. Yates' lines from Among School Children describe an amazing facet of Mary Ann. O oh, body swayed to music, O oh, brightening glance, how can we know the dancer from the dance? Now the dance Mary Ann created was the dance of life. It was beautiful, 
true and meaningful. When I was with her, I felt safe and free and warm. And she made me want to be a beautiful person. She herself was so beautiful, and she surrounded herself with such beauty. But you couldn't tell the dancer from the dance because always Mary Ann was the maker of beauty, and the beauty itself was Mary Ann. I thought of Ruthka's love poem. I knew a woman lovely in her bones. When small birds sighed, she would sigh back at them. Ah, when she moved, she moved more ways than one. The shapes a bright container can contain. Mary Ann was indeed lovely in her bones because she was the most loving mother and friend any of us will ever know. She was absolutely firm about the importance of family and unwavering love and always moved to help us in far more ways than one. She was herself the essence of love. However, one of my favorite among Mary Ann's qualities was that she was witty and loved fun. She moved more ways than one and relished fun and laughter as well as serious discussion. She was also the essence of kindness. Hers was the only kind of kindness that makes sense anymore, as Naomi Nye says in her poem. The kindness that raises its head from the crowd of the world to say, it is I you have been looking for, and then goes with you everywhere, like a shadow or a friend. The delightful result of this kindness, which was her hallmark mark, was that she never lost sight of anyone she knew, and she never spoke less civilly of anyone she knew. Mary Ann made everyone around her a more virtuous person. She will always be with each of us, everywhere. She taught me how to express affection whenever I could. I thought of Robert Frost's lines, only where love and need are one, and the work is play for mortal stakes. Is the deed ever really done for heaven and the future's sakes? Mary Ann lived her life for heaven and the future's sakes. That was her work and her play. She was a woman of faith who required joy and love around her. She worked to help others make the art and passion, the warmth and sensibility in her own life a part of our own lives. Poet, lover, dancer, friend, guide, and mentor, Mary Ann was in the end, though, a warrior. She fought for truth and family, for honesty and compassion, for discipline and joy, as well as for her own life. In true Marianne style, and she won for her beloved family and friends deeper, richer, more significant lives. I'll end with Stephen Spender. In her life, she fought for life. She wore at her heart the fire's center. Born of the sun, she has left the vivid air signed with her honor. In short, Mary Ann was pure gold, and her tragedy is ours. Now, Robert Frost says, nothing gold can stay. But you know, Mary Ann's radiance was so vivid, you know she'll be with each one of us forever. Mary Ann, we love you. 
and you'll stay with us. Thank you. At the direction of the funeral directors and our parish council members, you may come forward to offer your final farewell to our sister in Christ, Mary Ann. Please follow their instructions as you come forward and then exit the church down this aisle over where I'm pointing. May her memory be eternal.
Ιησούς Θεό, αυτή γαλεξί λύπε τη συγγενείας αυτής και προς τα φωνε πιέτε που και τη φροντίσουσα τα της ματαιότητος και πολυμόχθους αρχός ούνην συγγενείστε και φίλοι ατιχωρισόμεθα υπέρ αναπαύσε Κύριος εξόμεθα. Σκαθαρότερα 
كرانيم في عنيم فافتح
Pyre odi ton serafim karaton ar kangelon kere nymphia nymphte.